good day and welcome to our online service of Dr. Dale Russell. It is so good to be with you this morning from wherever you are watching. If you have children, we want to invite you to visit our website where you will find online lesson material for your children. Today we are continuing with our series Branded, but for now we're going to worship with Henry and the worship team.
From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing Of the goodness of God And all my life you have been fed the goodness of God and I love your voice you have led me through the fire and in darkest nights you are close like no other I know you as a father I know you as a friend worship team for the lovely worship now for you guys that are still at home and watching the service from home we want to invite you to unlock and come back to church we are missing you so much and we can't wait for you to also become a part of the live worship here at church as well as the fellowship afterwards hope to see you next week and then we would like to invite all our business men and business women to join us for a free Twane business event on Zoom. 
All that we ask is that you register on Church Suite and you will see right now on the screen, we have two events, one in the evening and one in the morning. You can choose one that is convenient for you. We have professional speakers like Professor Karel van Art as well as Niku van Amerwe. Hope to see you there. Then we are right in the middle of our branded series and we are now going to listen to Llewellyn preach to us. Thank you, Llewellyn. Well, good morning from our side. It's so lovely to spend time with you in your home or wherever you are. We are in our final week of our series, Branded, The Power of Association. That which I associate with, I become. In fact, we had this scripture that we just, we just wrestled with because it, it actually tells us of, of where we are and where we come from. Where are we going? And this scripture in Colossians 1 verse 15 says the following. It says, we look at the sun and we see that God who cannot be seen. We see this God who cannot be seen. It says, we look at the sun and see God's original purpose for everything in creation. Everything that he has created. The Passion Translation reads as follows. It says, he is the exact living image, the essential manifestation of of the unseen God, the visible presentation of the invisible, the firstborn and the preeminent one, the sovereign and the originator of all creation. Understanding that when we look at him, we want to associate with him because we are branded. And so the first week we spoke about the whole idea of association with him, the power of it, my identification within him. And last week, the, the key to authority and that key of authority speaks of my intimate relationship with Christ. And so when we stand still about that is, what is the action that I need to take in terms of my relationship with Christ? If I get to a place where I say, I, need to, I was born again and I gave my heart to Christ and I live in that relationship and not in a, in a religion context, I live in a relationship context with Him. What is the steps that I need to take? What do I need to do to, be, to, to receive this power of authority? To receive this power of association. And I think sometimes we miss this one step in, in our walk with Christ because it's in our death, in his death and his resurrection that we associate with. It's in him sitting in the right hand of Christ, of, of God. And as Christ sitting there, the power lies within that, that I associate with him. I sit with him in heavenly places. I was death with him and I was rose from death with him. Why? Because I see Christ. And if I see Christ, I see myself reflecting in who Christ is. And this morning, I want to stand still by the fact that we need to understand the power of the baptism of the believer. And so there's a few scriptures that I just want to read because just to lay a foundation when it comes to this baptism, it speaks of how, uh, how the early church was amazing in terms of this, how they actually helped us, showing us and, and, and be an example for us as believers, how we need to do this. In, and listen to it in Acts 2 verse 41, in the NIV it says, those who accepted his message were baptized and about 3,000 were added to the numbers daily. He said, after Peter has spoken to them, they have responded and they were baptized. We see later on when Philip preached to the Christ to the Samaritans, how they actually were baptized. Both, the Bible says it's so beautiful, both men and women. Listen to this, Acts 8 verse 12. But when they, the believer, Philip, has to proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus. They were baptized, both, listen to this, both men and women. We see how these disciples of Christ, these apostles, when they went into the different countries, into the different regions, they preached the gospel and the act of obedience was to baptize people. Listen to this. Simon the magician, for many years led astray with his magic, but when confronted with the power of the gospel, what did he do? Can I be baptized? He believed and he was baptized. Acts 8 verse 13, Simon himself believed and was baptized and he followed Philip everywhere, astonished by the great signs and miracles he saw. 
There's power in this. We see how Paul comes and Paul preached to the Corinthian church. And we all know what happened in the Corinthian church and how the church was almost in disarray. And Paul comes and he preached to them and he, he explained to them the power of association. That I'm branded in Christ. And listen to this. He said, many of the Corinthians who heard Paul believed and were baptized. They wanted to leave the old life and follow the new way of living. So we need to understand that this baptism that I'm talking about today, it is more than just the act of going underwater. It's more than just baptism. It's more than just the ritual of Christianity. It's more than that. It's a sacrament that Christ himself did it. Christ himself showed us the examples. And there's two things that Christ did and showed us the example. It's the first sacrament, the fact that he was baptized and, 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 and God the Father said something over him. And the second sacrament was the fact that he himself sat with his disciples and he served them communion. There's power in those two sacraments. Listen to Matthew 13, verse, verse 13, oh, Matthew 3, verse 13 to 17. It says, then Jesus came to Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. He said, but John tried to determine to, to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized. I don't need to be baptized you. And do you come, why do you come to me? And Jesus replied, Let it be so now. It is for proper for it is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. It says, then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At the moment, heaven were open, and he saw the Spirit of God descended like a dove and enlightened on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son. And he didn't stop there. It says, Whom I love, with whom I am well pleased with. I am satisfied with my son. He took the re authority, the responsibility to let people know we don't live from this place of kingdom, this kingdom of darkness, this place of darkness, but we live in a new realm, a new kingdom, and that is the kingdom of God. The authority, I no longer a slave, and I'm taking that responsibility. See, it, taking the obedience step, in needing and saying, I need to understand. I'm showing you as disciples of Christ, what Christ has done on the cross, on, in the baptism, with communion, whatever Christ has done, the power is an association to associate with him in saying, Christ, I want to be like you. Last week was so beautiful when Martina said, he says, it's, it's, it's entangled. We can't determine who is who. If you look at me, you see Christ. The fact of the matter is, if I look at you, I need to see Christ. We want to see Christ because it is in that that we live, move, and have our being. And so I associate with Christ, not only in His ascension, not only in the position where he sits from, but us, our, us, I associate in the death and the resurrection of who Christ is. This is Jesus further on ordered all the disciples to be baptized. We do not baptize babies. And this is what you need to understand, people. At Doxideo, we don't baptize babies. We don't baptize adults. We baptize believers. People who say, I believe in God. Listen to Matthew, 8 verse, Matthew 28 verse 18. And we all know this because this was a command to his disciples. Jesus And Jesus came and spoke unto them saying, all power. This authority that we've just spoken about. When Jesus came out of the water, the dove ascended on him. The authority has been given unto him. And that authority has been given unto us. Now listen to this. He says, it's been given unto me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, meaning I'm giving you the authority, the power of association is within that, that I associate with Christ and Christ has given me this power to do what? To make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit to teach them to observe all the commands that I'm given to you. There's power 
in this baptism. You see, the testimony regarding baptism is to understand that I've moved over from an old place, a place of performance, a place of not good enough, to a place of acceptance, to a place of just achieving and not achieving, but receiving what Christ has in store for me. You see, when a believer was baptized, he thereby openly confessed the fundamental truth of his faith, that Jesus Christ has died of his sin and was buried and resurrected with him. It's a new life. It's a new day. It's a new dawn for who? For myself, because I am associating with him in the baptism. Listen to, to Romans 6 verse 1 to what Paul, how Paul describes this because Paul understood something regarding baptism that when you give your heart to Christ and saying, Lord, I'm giving my heart over to you, but I've never done the acting and the obedient step of, of being baptized, I will always want to go back to my old life. Always try to, to go back to where I used to be and what used to happen. And now Paul comes and Paul says this, and I'm going to go back to the, to the Israelites just in a second, but listen to how Paul describes this in Romans 6 from verse 1 to 5. He says, live in it, um, live in it, any longer or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ were baptized into death we were therefore buried with him through the baptism in the death in order listen to this in order that just as Christ was raised from the death through the glory of the father we too may live new life for if we have been united with him, the death like, we will certainly also be united with his resurrection. Paul comes in, in the early, uh, uh, later, later in verse, in chapter 5, he says this, he says, are we just going to continue sinning because of the grace that is more than enough for us? Certainly not. Because I've got a new life, a new life in Christ. I want to live from a place of victory, not to that place of, of re achieving and, and doing and doing and doing, but a place where I'm accepted. It is in Christ. Don't you understand? And so when we look at the whole Israelites and this whole journey of where they come from, they actually went through the baptism as well. That when we speak about the baptism, it's the, it's the crossing over from an old way of living to a new way. It's not just about the grace. Grace is unmerited. It's for us. It's for free. But I need to live in that grace. I need to do it. And it's a story of the Israelites, how they, in Exodus, in, and we know the book of Exodus. Exodus means the crossing over the, the exodus of, of Egypt into the promised land and what God has in store for them and had to go through the Red Sea. The, uh, it is amazing how we need to understand this. There was two amazing moments, um, almost similar to the, to the sacraments where they had to go through the baptism, through the Red Sea, and later on at, at Mount Sinai, how God provided for them, and almost the, the communion, having that meal together as a unity. But the Israelites had to go through this. They had to leave their old life going all the way through. But it's only after Remember how before the, before the Red Sea, the Israelites always wanted to go back to Israel because they, they thought to themselves, we don't have enough. We, we are struggling. And so they wanted, they, they, they're actually longing for what they had in Egypt. Maybe we should go back because there was more than enough food. And they wanted to go back, but it was a lie. But only when they went through the, de the Red Sea, um, the Bible describes it, if you read it, 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 they camped for seven, from day 17 at the Red Sea, and, and you're about 
day 25, they crossed through the Red Sea. And when they were behind on the other side, when they crossed over, when they were on the other side, something amazing happened. They did not long back to Egypt because they went through the baptism, a new life, a new way of doing life. But here's the amazing story that we need to understand. When you go through the baptism, it's not a struggle. It's not difficult because I think sometimes we don't want to make that, that step of faith because we think it's difficult. It's not. Christ, is, Christ made it as, as possible for all of us and we read it in, 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 in Exodus as well, in Exodus 14, verse 21 to 22, how God made it possible for the Israelites to walk through the Dead Sea. All of us know whenever there's a lot of water, when that water needs to depart, what do we see? You need to get mud. I don't know who of you have walked through mud before. It's difficult. But the Bible says the following. Listen to this. It says the water were divided. Verse 21. And the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on the right and on the left, going through this baptism as the Israelites, knowing we are exiting our old life, entering a new life, a new way of doing life. That is what we want to do. But Christ, God made it possible for them. And having that, it was the ground was dry and they could cross over. I don't know where you are. Maybe you are wrestling with this, understanding that I want to do it. Galatians 2 verse 20, I have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The, la the life that I now live after my baptism in this new area, in this new kingdom. Listen to this. He says, the life that I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave him for me. You see, the baptism was a public statement for the Israelites crossing over, crossing through the Red Sea. And just as us, knowing when we are baptized, I'm proclaiming, I'm testifying. It's a public statement for everyone who knows me. I remember my own baptism, how my mom invited my friends to come and witness because I'm making this public statement. I am finished. With my old life, I'm entering into a new season. You see, when the believers were baptized, it was a symbol of clothing yourself with Christ. I've clothed myself with Christ. Galatians 3 verse 27, For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. Remember, Whenever there's a Grammy Awards or whatever this awards in Hollywood, on the red carpet before that, all those cameras, the guy who does the interviews will ask the question, so who do you wear today? And, uh, when, when, when people ask you, who do you wear? Who's your designer? It gives you a status, a sense of status. It creates, I am associating with that designer. That is who I am. My, my design and what I wear today is because of that and that and that designer. And I'm wearing him and I associate with him, but he also wants to be associated with me. And standing there, it's a public statement. I'm wearing so-and-so. My question to you is, are you wearing so-and-so? Who are you associating with today? So remember, just as a prodigal son, when he returned home, his father did two things, put a ring on his finger and clothed him, understanding that you are part of this family you belong to this family the brand that we represent you can associate with there's power in that and so when we baptize people it's because of that and I don't know where you are this morning but maybe you say Llewellyn I haven't been there I don't understand 
the fact that I need to be baptized. Listen, it's a command. It's an obedient step. Obedient step in the right direction because God wants us to be baptized. It's the fact of the matter that Christ did it and we need to do it. There's a new life of living. I believe that sometimes we, we don't want to go through the baptism water because we still long for our old life. As the Israelites longed for Egypt, but when they went through the Red Sea, something new was waiting for them. Christ had something in store for you on the other side of the baptism water. We are associating with His death, His resurrection, His ascension, and we sit with Him in heavenly places. I have authority if I do this, if I go through this. I know, God, I want to do this. And so I want to challenge you. Next week, we will baptize people at church. And you're welcome just to come and say, listen, I want to be part of this baptism. Maybe there's questions that you have in your heart. Take this word, take this scripture and go into the scripture and go see what the scripture is saying about baptism. Because God want to do it in and through you. So let's live a new life, a new kingdom, because it's in that that we live and move and have our being. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for the opportunity that we can identify, that we can associate, that we have this authority living with an intimate relationship with you, understanding where we come from and where we're heading. And so, Lord, I want to pray, may your kingdom come and may your will be done on each and every one that understand the power of our resurrection and our ascension in Christ Jesus. Bless us, Lord. And may you comfort them who needs to make this decision. You have made it possible for all of us. And may we live in that. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.
flame on coming after me There's no wall they won't kick down Lie won't tear down coming after me There's no shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up coming after me Thank you to Andrea and the worship team uh, for that awesome worship song. And we want to invite you today that if you feel in your heart that you want to get baptized, we have a baptism opportunity coming up and we want to invite you to just send a WhatsApp to the number on the bottom of the screen, your, na your name and baptism to the number and we will get back to you regarding that. Thank you also for being with us this morning and we want to ask you that if you have any prayer requests that you will send uh, a prayer request to the number also on the screen. And uh, we have a, a prayer team that is praying with you and for you every week, trusting God for you for a breakthrough. And also, if you want to get connected to Doxedo Russell campus, if you want to be part of our campus, just send an email to Llewellyn Venor, whose email address is also on the bottom of the screen. Thank you for watching. We see you next week.